Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room. Stravinsky, number eight. Oh, my goodness. And I know now we're only going to have nine Stravinskys. So we're almost at the end. Here is the selection. You can see that they all come from a similar series. So we're going to be able to go through those, I think, rather quickly once we know what the series is. Some of you probably noticed just from the edge there. Um, and, oh, there's some really good stuff. We've been going through some fantastic recordings. You know, the fact that they're down here in the overflow room is only because a lot of the same performances were issued separately or boxed up or were duplicated in ways. So I had extras and I had to stick them down here. But boy, it, we are just, I don't think there is a, is, a, is a composer out there who has more fine recordings than Stravinsky does. It just, it's amazing just how good some of this stuff is. So right here we have the Symphony of Psalms um, and, uh, and Abraham and Isaac and uh, the Elegy for JFK and Babel and two poems by Paul Verlaine with Fischer Dieskau baritone and the Stuttgart Radio Symphony Orchestra with Gary Bertini on Orfeo. This was 1982. These were the, you know, these recordings came out at the very beginning of the CD era when, you know, independent labels started making them and they were issuing some wonderful stuff. I don't think this is still around, but that's why I kept it, you know? And then we've got, uh, what's this? Great performances, a special bonus. Uh, we've got Petrushka with Bernstein and Pulcinella Suite with Bernstein and Bernstein discussing Stravinsky and the Petrushka Ballet which is fun. These, these talks, of course, are always wonderful, enjoyable, and the performances are really good. This is, Petrushka is absolutely splendid. So that's good to have. Now, we, here we go. Are you ready? We have a whole pile of things here, some of which are, you know, with the others and some of which are not. This is a lot of the Robert Kraft Stravinsky edition, the original one that he did for Music Masters. Uh, mostly with the Orchestra of St. Luke's. And these are absolutely first class for the most part. Um, and like I said, some of them got duplicated. I said this before in the last video talking about Robert Kraft. Um, I, I, I think he owned the rights to some of this stuff or, or, or some of it reappeared on Koch and then it reappeared on Naxos and it all got recoupled and then there were new recordings and remakes with different orchestras, mostly in London. And so I, I, I am completely confused <laughs> as to Robert Kraft's Stravinsky recordings, but there's a lot of them and they're very reliable, except for the early ballets, where he's just not that exciting and others have done it better. Not necessarily with more fidelity to the score or accuracy um, in terms of, you know, certain aspects of the text, but just more exciting to listen to. Here's the Rake's Progress. This was always a very good performance. Um, it has, like singers, it's an opera. Now let me see which singers it has. Um, we have to find out, it's in the booklet here. Okay, yes, let's see. Jane West, John Garrison, Arthur Woodley, John Cheek, Shirley Love, Wendy White, Melvin Lowry, Jeffrey Johnson, the Chorus of Whores and Roaring Boys, uh, Citizens of London and Bedlamites are the Greg Smith singers. And uh, okay, um, it's, it's a very good Rake's Progress. I don't know if there are any bad Rake's Progresses. It's not an opera that's been recorded all that often, but there was, there was a big rush of Rake's progresses, progresse, progri, whatever you want to call them, um, in, the, in, the, in the 80s and 90s. Because Azawa did it, and this thing showed up, and there were, there were, well, there were a couple others, right? We talked about Kent Nagano's, yeah, that one's right there. And there were at least three or four of them that all popped up, and they were pretty good, they really were. So, you know, it was a question of choice, how you felt about the singers. Then we've got the Firebird with, with the Philharmonia, um, I think with, yes, the Philharmonia. And then there's the London Philharmonic doing some of this stuff too. Now this is the first recording of the complete original version, including, you know, the offstage trumpets, which Dohnani uses in the Vienna recording, by the way. And we've got fireworks and the, the canon for orchestra on a Russian popular tune, the four etudes, variations, the concerto in D for strings, I mean, there was a lot of stuff on these discs. Usually you just get the Firebird like all by itself or with one other work. But, you know, these are very generously coupled. The only problem is that the performance of the Firebird is dull. It just was. I'm sorry, Robert. He was such a great guy. I enjoyed talking to him and spending time with him and all of those things. He was just 
marvelous, wonderful guy. But boy, in those early ballets, he just was, he wasn't his, he, he was a late Stravinsky guy and a neoclassical Stravinsky guy. He could be fabulous. But, you know, a romantic sort of Russian guy? No, 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 no. Uh, so, so what are the rest of these things? All right, let's go through them quickly because they were sort of organized thematically. So here's Stravinsky in new directions. You have the Capriccio, the Cantata, the Septet, three songs from William Shakespeare, In Memoriam, Dylan Thomas, and Abraham and Isaac. I, these, I love these programs. And this is wonderfully done. You know, the Capriccio is a delicious work that never gets performed. Never. I, I, I adore the thing. It's How long is it? It's 17 minutes long. It's too short. I only saw it performed live once. And I remember it extremely vividly. It was the Baltimore Symphony with Joseph Silverstein conducting. Um, remember the former concert master of the Boston Symphony who conducted the Utah Symphony for a while. And the soloist was Veronica Jochum, Eugen Jochum's daughter. And they also did Sibelius 7 and some other things. It was a really fine program. Very, very interesting. And I remember because my parents were visiting me down in Baltimore at Johns, when I was at Johns Hopkins then. So they were around and I brought them. It was in Meyerhoff Hall just after it opened. And it was lots of fun. We almost got killed in a car accident because I was driving. So, I, you know, it was a vivid evening for many reasons. Then we've got Petrushka, which, which Kraft does better than he did the Firebird or the Rite of Spring. And the Nightingale, um, the complete opera. Uh, so that was fun to have. It's on got two discs worth of stuff here, I think. Or is it just one disc with a, it's a one disc with a book. No, it's two discs. Bonus disc. Stravinsky, the composer, bonus disc. Oh, it's, it's excerpts of like the whole series. Volumes one through nine. Okay. That was volume 10. So that was like the next, next wave. Then we've got the violin concerto with soloist Krzysztof Smietana and the Ebony Concerto and the Flood with Robert Tier as Noah and the clarinetist is Michael Wright. So that's Stravinsky, volume 11. So I think the earlier ones, now here it is, volume three, Persephone. Oh, you could never find Persephone. I mean, this is outside the Stravinsky edition and I love Persephone. It's one of the few pieces with a narrator that doesn't make me want to run away screaming. The music is just beautiful. It's absolutely marvelous. And then we've got King of the Stars, Zvezdaliki. Um, the Symphonies of Wind Instruments, the Concertino for 12 Instruments, and the Octet. All of this is Robert Kraft, let's not forget. Then we've got American Stravinsky, The Greeting Prelude, The Star Spangled Banner, Dumbarton Oaks, Eight Instrumental Miniatures, Circus Polka, Scherzo alla Russe, Send the Ballet, The Balanchine Stravinsky Chorale, Agon, and Von Himmelhoch Variations, which one of you said, why don't people ever record that? Well, here they are, the Von Himmelhoch Variation Things. Um, and I, I can't explain why we never hear them. They're, it's fun works. So that's nice to have. And then we've got, what's this one? Uh, Histoire de Soldat, the actual, though the suite, and two sketches for a sonata, and, and Pribautki, Priba that thing, and the cat's lullabies, and the Monumentum Pro Gesualdo di Venosa. Remember that thing? Yeah, so there, there was the other thing you were wondering where it was and his mass, and the dove descending, and canticum sacrum, all of which squishes into 77 minutes and 35 seconds with the Orchestra of St. Luke's. There we go with that. And then we have volume, this is volume two, the Pulcinella Suite, Symphony in C, Russian Peasant Choruses, Russian Sacred Choruses, and the Wedding, which Kraft did probably better than anyone in the universe. It was his, his, one of his signature pieces and one of Stravinsky's greatest works. And he always made sure that it sounded like it. So that's great. And then we've got Renard, Suites 1 and 2 for Small Orchestra, Four Etudes for Piano, Four Norwegian Moods for Orchestra, The, con the Concerto for Two Pianos, Ode, the Ode, which was originally film music, the Triptych for Orchestra, Ragtime for 11 Instruments, Piano Rag Music, and then of course Renard. Wow, I keep these for those reasons, those wonderful collections of things. And finally, last but not least, Oedipus Rex, um, narrated by Paul Newman, which is really rather a cool performance of Oedipus Rex with, with, with uh, let's see, Oedipus is John Humphrey, Yocasta is Wendy White, Theresius is John Cheek, and uh, it's the Orchestra of St. Luke's, and it's great. Absolutely terrific. You also have the Symphony in Three Movements, 
Fanfare for a New Theater, Fanfare for Three Trumpets, Apollo, Requiem Canticles, Symphony of Psalms on disc two, and The Rite of Spring. Not very excitingly done, because Kraft just didn't <clears throat> in that particular work. So those are the Robert Kraft Stravinsky things that were on Music Masters. Um, and it was a wonderful series. I wish it would come out as it was originally done in a box, because it, it really is a great way to explore Stravinsky with familiar and unfamiliar things. It was a brilliant series. Okay, Stravinsky Chamber Music, Music for Violin and Piano. The Suite Italienne, which is basically transcriptions of Pulcinella. The Duo Concertante and the Divertimento. They're all charming stuff based on other music. And it's the Divertimento is from The Fairy's Kiss. And, and you know, it's like, nice. What's this one? Oh, goodness, do I have two of these? I have two of these. This was in the last video. Yes, dear. One of the cats is up there somewhere. Um, the Danse Concertante, Polchinella, and Sibelius' Canzonetta with Avanti and Yucca Pecasaris Day. How I got two of these, I have no idea. I don't know if I could even find the other one. Oh, there it is. It's right over there. Oh, well. The Rite of Spring <clears throat> with Chicago and Azawa and fireworks. This is, this is the uh, Basic 100 series, I think. Wait a minute, let me see. Hang on one second, please. I just need to take this out because if I'm not mistaken, yes, the booklet note is by me. I have, oh, if I got to hear a story about doing this series, what a pile of hooey that was. But uh, yeah, so I did the first like 30, 30 or 40 <laughs> in this series of basic, what, basic repertoire things um, for RCA. So I keep this, if only because the note's by me, and I have no idea what I said. I still have a few of them kicking around. And then we've got more Ricardo Muti. We saw this couple differently. Now it's a twofer. Um, did we already look at this one? Yeah, I think I have this one. Yeah, I had this one somewhere else, too. This is a duplicate of a duplicate. The Rite of Spring and Petrushka coupled with, with Philly and Muti, which are marvelous. Polchinella with Mariner and the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. And uh, the Danse Concertante with the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra and Mariner. I know we've talked about that one before. I can't even keep it straight. It really is amazing. I look in there and maybe it's, well, who knows where it is. Uh, and then this one. Oh, yes. This is the Dohnani one. Remember that? We talked about these because they're now on Australian Eloquence. Decca Eloquence, the Firebird and Bartok's Two Portraits. This also has all of the, the like, textural thingies, or most of them, that Robert Kraft brings to his performances. It's about 10 times as exciting, and it's got the Vienna Philharmonic, which is totally hot, hot, hot. So that's it for this pile, my friends. Oh, my goodness. Keep on listening, and thanks for joining me. Take care.